What's going on guys? So here it is, a highly requested video, how I edit my Instagram photos. Okay, so just to start off, I use my MacBook Pro for this, sometimes I use my dad's iMac as well, which is in my room. Uh, some of you may think that it's actually my iMac, but it's not. Uh, it's my dad's iMac, it used to be downstairs, but uh, like until just recently we had like a little little like desk downstairs and we haven't got it anymore. So I asked him like, can I put it in my room and he was okay with it. But anyway, back to the video. Now I know a lot of you guys use like Photoshop to edit your photos and like you just, you just get all creative with it and you just add like, you just add stuff that aren't really there and you just take a lot of stuff away and like you make a complete new photo out of it and that is something which I don't do. I use Lightroom and what I try and do is I try and enhance and edit what is already there. So like I used to use a uh, Visco Cam for the, uh, for the iPhone and I used to use, uh, what else? face chewed and I used to spend like ages like getting rid of every single pimple and what I used to do is I used to get rid of the stubble here because I didn't like like the way it looked on photos and it was getting like unrealistic so what I've done is I stopped doing that and then I started using Lightroom and just enhancing what is already there. Anyway if you want to emulate like my Instagram photos you just need to do two things. Uh, number one is really important is shoot in raw. Now raw photos are uh, like they're much bigger and they store much more data than uh, JPEG for example. JPEG is a compressed photo and basically what that is is that is like the finished product whereas raw uh, can still be edited and still be uh, like you can still apply like presets and, and mess around with the with the colors and stuff like that. So uh, the photos, uh, the raw files I mean they are much bigger, but that's because there's much more data in them and there's much more room to edit, which are, uh, whereas JPEG is compressed and you'll lose quality if you start editing JPEG photos in Lightroom. And tip number two is what I do is I stand at a distance and then zoom in with my camera. And uh, what happens then is the object that, that you're trying to like uh, get in focus becomes very clear and crisp and the background becomes blurry and this creates like a depth in the photos which is called depth of field or the way I like to call it blurry background. So those are just my two little tips uh, before getting started. I mainly use my Canon 500D for photos but I also would like to use my Canon G7X for photos as well. Just depends like what I've got with me at the time and like if me 500D is in my bag and I can't be asked getting it out so I just use my G7X. G7X is a point and shoot camera but you can still shoot in RAW with G7X uh, cameras so even point and shoot nowadays I've got uh, the option to shoot in RAW. Anyway. Enough of the small talk, let's hop into the computer. Okay, so the first thing I do when I open Lightroom and import the photo is apply my preset. So I'm just going to import these photos real quick and then click on develop. And here you've got a load of presets that I've downloaded or found on the internet or blah, blah, blah. And then I use my own preset, which is this one. And I use this because I like all my photos being like the same style. And so also create like a theme on my Instagram page. And maybe you've noticed my photos are slightly colder, crisp, and I've got like no highlights whatsoever. And that is also what you can see on my preset. I've got my highlights on minus 100. I'll just show you guys what happens if I put them at, uh, the highlights on 100. See, I like that right down. Shadows, I like a little bit less shadow. Like some people like the really dark black shadows. I'm not really a big fan of shadows, so I just add plus 50 on that. I uh, don't like it very white either, so I always have that on minus 50. Same goes for black, so I'm not a big fan of black. So plus 50 is less black. Clarity, I'll just show you guys. I always have it on 23, but I'll show you guys what it looks like without clarity. And with loads of clarity. You can just see it just goes a bit like, a bit sharp, a bit crisp, but don't want it too crisp, just like it at around 23. Now that is an uneven number, so that really annoys me, but... I don't want it any higher than that, so I'm just going to stick with that and deal with the with the uneven number. I uh, don't really mess around too much with this because I like to keep it as natural as possible. So just sum it all up. I don't really do much with the exposure. Leave it at nil. Just show you guys what happens if I put the exposure on minus five, plus five, very exposed. I just like that normal. Unless I've got like a really exposed photo, then I will mess around with that. Contrast. Have it on minus fifty. Just show you guys the difference. Because I mess around with the clarity, I don't really mess around too much with the contrast, so I'll just put on that on minus 50. Highlights right down to 100, like I said. Shadows plus 50, black plus 50. Whites minus 50, clarity on 23. Saturation, which i uh, just show you guys what the difference is. Very colourful. Great. I just leave that plus 16 in the other one, I think. Another thing I do is up here, I click on this. 
and uh, sometimes on my G7X this will be on as shot and it will be like smaller and then I click on the original and then I got a bigger picture and I change the angle to also think this is quite a straight photo so not much will happen but that just automatically uh, gets the photo straighter. After I finish with that, export onto my desktop, no short photo this time and then I make sure it's on JPEG, quality on 100 and then export it and then it'll be on my desktop ready to upload to Instagram. We go there it is and another secret tip of mine is just before I upload it to Instagram or post it or air it off to myself I put it in Photoshop and then what I do is the following I change the size of the photo to 5x4 and what happens with this is uh, because the photo is slightly longer than square uh, people actually, it takes people, it takes people longer to scroll past the photo, so they'll see it for a longer period of time, and this increases the likelihood of them liking or engaging with that post. So once I finish with this, I save the photo, airdrop it to myself onto my phone, and this uh, preserves like the quality and uh, the size of the post, and then I upload it onto Instagram. I used later.com for a while, and with that you can already plan out your Instagram post, but I noticed that they compress the photos and you can't add any photos that are larger than five megabytes. So uh, after all that work, working with raw photos and stuff like that, then you just end up compressing the photo and uploading it to later.com. So I've stopped doing that, I just uh, post it manually to my phone and then uh, think of a caption and then post it to Instagram. Anyway, that's all I got for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. What I'll do is I will have my preset in the description box down below, free of charge, if you want you can download it and use it for yourself and create like a JV fitness theme on Instagram. If not, uh, I've just explained to you how, how like Lightroom works, just really quick, so you can just mess around and create your own little presets. But anyway, uh, like this video if you liked the video, comment and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one. Gotta do what I gotta do.